Hello, this is about Tony Robbins coaching. I'm so great. And the fact that I had Tony Robbins coaching for a year, and this is a review of it. It might help you if you want to do coaching, or you're thinking about it, or maybe you're just curious about whether it's worth the money. Let's get into it. So I'm not sure how Facebook does it, but I kept on getting the Tony Robbins coaching adverts pop up on my feed the whole time I was thinking about doing Tony Robbins coaching. So it's some kind of Facebook mind melt almost. Anyway, lo and behold, this led to me being on the phone to a guy called Dominic, who's the most American man you could have ever imagined. America, fuck yeah. Dominic was from the Tony Robbins Foundation, and at this point, my British cynicism is like sky high. Dominic talks to me about what I want out of coaching, and I said to him that I want some form of confidence, because I was going through a lot of confidence and anxiety issues that I wanted to kind of break through. And in a really American voice, he told me that emotional mastery was an awesome outcome. I mean, his voice was so American, it may well have been a bald eagle flying out of my phone, playing the Star Spangled Banner on an eagle-sized guitar. One thing led to another, and Dominic skipped to his sales pitch. He didn't need to, because I already knew before I picked up the phone I was going to do the coaching. I'd kind of been mulling it over in my mind for a while, and the decision had been made. Essentially, the catalyst for this point was the fact that I realised that it was me standing in the way of me. And I think that's the case for most things in life. We stand in the way of ourselves. We become what we believe. I had a, a real problem with believing I could do anything and I just realised I need somebody to kick my ass. So long and short of it is, I said yes. It was time for action. No more reading, no more procrastination, no more delays. I committed and I gave an overexcited Dominic my card details. Let's talk costs. Costs will change due to exchange rates. It will also change year on year, I'm sure. But this was early 2018 when I took up my year of coaching. So the costs were 12 months of coaching cost £5,856. That works out at £488 per month. However, here's the catch. That price was significantly reduced to £3,703 if I paid in a lump sum rather than in 12 month increments. So obviously I paid the lump sum. What I got for that was 36 hours of coaching, half hour calls. So that's about once every 10 days. And I got a ticket to UPW, Unleash the Power Within for London 2019. I've already done a video about that if you wanna look. And I've linked that video in the comments below. <laughs> Now what happened at this point is I got off the phone to Dominic and I was all excited as my fiance, now wife, walked into the kitchen and I just said to her, I've just spent £3,700 on coaching, all kind of geared up because of Dominic's American enthusiasm. And then she just looked at me blankly and said, what about the wedding money? And I was like, oh shit, the wedding... Still, I was committed at that point and there is a £900 cancellation fee, so watch out for that. But that wasn't the point, I was going to do it anyway, I was fully determined. So on we went. Let's talk about the first call. Now the first call is when you get assigned a coach and this guy I'm gonna call D because it's very easy to Google his name. He's got a very unique name to Google. But anyway, he was Dutch. He's a Dutch Indian gentleman and he was super enthusiastic and I really clicked with him straight away. However, there was a certain moment of disappointment that I didn't get Tony Robbins as my teacher because guess what? Everybody wants to have somebody exactly like Tony Robbins to coach them when they bought Tony Robbins coaching. I'm so great. Now the first call lasts an hour. We had a good chat about where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And I really warmed to this guy straight away. He was a pro, he was a bit older than me, which means that he could give me some advice. You get life coaches who are like 30 years old and you think, what the fuck do you know at 30? But this guy was spot on. And when we talked about my anxieties and my anxiety at work especially, one of the things he did was he said, right, let's address some of that straight away. This technique is a Tony Robbins technique from NLP and it's called the triad. And essentially what D told me to do was think of a time that I felt relaxed and in control and think about the physiology around that. How I held my head, how I stood, those kind of things. Then how I sounded, the words I used, 
my language. Then finally, what I was thinking and concentrating on, my focus. And that makes up the triad, the physiology, the language, and the focus. I was told to evoke all these emotions as clearly as I could in my head, and then anchor them to some sort of movement. So really go deep into the emotion and anchor onto it some sort of movement that would help me evoke that emotion in a time when I don't feel as confident. I'm gonna show you now a tri my triad that I actually drew up and used after I went through it with D, and this may help you. Understand this is my own triad. This isn't a triad that uh, will apply to you. However, it does give you a good idea of that whole kind of NLP tactic and what works. D also wanted me to give my triad a name, uh, which I did. I'm not gonna tell it to you because it's quite a personal, uh, almost embarrassing thing, but it's not embarrassing if it works, is it? And then it was to say that name and to do the movements and to kind of evoke that emotion all the time. I have used it for well over a year and it works. It 100% works. So remove your cynicism and give it a try. Really good. So that was session one and straight away we delved into something which helped me. We got on to understanding what I wanted from life. Now, people think they know what they want for life. They think that they want to sit on a beach all day drinking cocktails after making millions of pounds. You don't, and your mind will not let you do that. But nonetheless, I was like, yeah, yeah, I know what I want from life. So Dee gave me a bit of work to do, which involved me visualizing everything I wanted in life. What was my perfect life? What was my perfect day? What did it look like? The type of person I was, and then write it all down. And then from the basis of that, work out where I want to be. Now, I didn't do that. Now you might think it's weird to not do the work that a coach has given you after you've spent 3,700 pounds on him, but this is the nature of resistance. This is the nature of being human. You're gonna do that. You're just not gonna do some of the work. In fact, some of the sessions that I had with Dee, I just kind of wanted them to be as easy as possible and him to leave me alone because he was kicking my ass the whole time. As Stephen Pressfield said, you don't think resistance is real, resistance will fucking bury you. Nonetheless, I didn't do this exercise and therefore it caused problems down the line. Now, using this visioning exercise, which I didn't do, we decided to put together something called an RPM, which is essentially an emotionally driven to-do list. This is a Tony Robbins tactic and RPM stands for resources, purpose and massive action. The premise is a to-do list is a list of shoulds, whereas an RPM becomes a list of musts. So you start with a purpose, the P, and my purpose was things like, I'm doing this because I wanna be my own boss, I wanna see the fruits of my labors, I wanna be in a creative job, I wanna not have the pressure of working in an office, etc., etc. Then you attach the R, the results, to your purpose. So for me, I said I wanted to be a freelance video editor. So that was my result attached to my purpose. So I had why I wanted to do something and then what it was. And then the M is just the list of things that you do, which is attached to the final result. Essentially, it's just a list of reasons to do things attached to the benefit at the end of it. Now here is the original RPM that I wrote. It's a bit scrappy. It's not gonna apply to you personally, but again, it just gives you an idea of the process. Now, before we go on, here's some things that I got from Now before I go on, here's a list of things that I got from coaching because I'm sure that's what you actually want to hear. Here's the positives that I got from coaching. Number one, I've bought professional video editing software and I've become proficient in editing and publishing videos. Number two, I've been consistent in booking comedy open mic nights in and around London. This is against massive trepidation and anxiety and I don't think I would have done it without Dee's help. Number three, I've managed to negate some very po-faced, serious, high-level business meetings, which I just used to put me in a proper tailspin of panic. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without the triad and without Dee's help. Number four, I think I've discovered what I really want to do in life, but more on that later, because it's not being a freelance video editor. Number five, this is a big one. I have learned to reframe being constantly busy to realizing it's a good thing because it represents things are getting done. I've reframed that busyness to something positive, and I know it doesn't seem like much, but that, that is a massive mental shift that has paid dividends. Number six, uh, the Wim Hof Method. I've made a couple of videos on it before, but um, that kind of discipline of doing that and pursuing things which are gonna make me better as a person definitely has come from that year of coaching. Number seven, I created a list of affirmations, which have been super helpful to me, and they keep me 
framed and grounded. I haven't done them much since I ended coaching, but more on that later. Then of course, I think it's worth mentioning some of the personality changes that I've undergone over that coaching year. For example, I've definitely become better at facing fears. I've become the type of person who sees myself as someone who faces fears and is comfortable with being uncomfortable. I felt the momentum of progress. You feel that kind of snowballing as it's like it's going downhill and you're just getting more and more done and suddenly you, things seem possible. Things that seemed absolutely insurmountable before suddenly come, become possible. I'm also much more adept at controlling my mood and getting in a positive state. That is something which is crucial to Tony Robbins teaching, uh, your state being essentially where your results start and maintaining and regulating your state is a really big important part of Tony Robbins and I've definitely got better at that. Listen, I love the person I've become from the year of coaching, love it. Once you feel progress, it is addictive. You want more and more of it, it's funny. It's like you need to get that hit of progress so you start driving yourself, it's great. And you might think that little incremental changes don't really amount to much, but over the course of a year, just tiny little changes, they compound. Now there's a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear and he talks about the British cycling team. Um, a coach came in and what he did was he just made hundreds of incremental changes just to do with the creams that they use on their muscles, just to do with how their bikes put together, just to do with mindset and training techniques, tiny little tweaks and they compounded over the course of the 5-10 years that he became coach to the point where they dominated the sport. So do not underestimate tiny little changes because over the course of a year, two years, five years, 10 years, you're course correcting to where you wanna go. But let's also talk about the downsides of coaching. I'm gonna be very brutally honest here about coaching because I know you wanna know this. And so here are some negatives. Number one, in that year of coaching, I did not earn any more money other than a pay rise that I would have got in the year in my job anyway. I did not earn a penny more. In fact, if anything, coaching has cost me a lot of money in terms of video editing, the amount I spent on coaching, and so on and so forth. Number two, I didn't create a new business. I didn't create a passive income or any of that kind of stuff that you hear. I did none of that. Number three, I didn't escape my office job and that's the thing that I hate the most in my life. It's the thing that really drags me down and I'm still in my office job. I mean, you can reframe your job as good or bad but ultimately I want to get out of the office and I didn't do that with coaching. And number four, I haven't changed my life overnight. I've definitely become a different person but I'm also still very much in the same position I am. A lot of it is mental, a lot of it is incremental changes but I don't want to oversell it. You're not going to do coaching and then suddenly become Grant Cardone overnight, all right? It was about call 18, bang in the middle, when Dee was on the phone to me and he was nagging me about the actions to do with video editing and getting clients and finding a price point. And I just turned around and I said to him, I do not want to be a video editor. And that's my fault for not doing those exercises earlier in the course. But I was just like, I do not want this. And he said to me, well, what do you want? And after a long, awkward silence, I said to him, I want to do comedy. Now I expected him to laugh at me. I expected him to mock it. I expected him to say that it wasn't a viable target or a viable goal. And all he did was say to me, that is great. Let's build towards that. What's happened here is you've just had a breakthrough. And it felt amazing. It actually felt amazing. Somebody being that positive about the silly dreams that I have in my head where I'm like, oh, I think I want to do comedy. He was like, wicked. Well, then we do that. Let's do another RPM and let's start over. And we did. But there's a lot of people in the world who are super, super negative and will happily burst your bubbles and tread on your dreams just because it makes them feel better, especially if they haven't achieved things themselves. There's that weird resistance, the crab in the bucket situation, where all the other crabs pull the other ones back in who are getting out. And that is what a lot of people do. Listen, Lady Gaga, before she was even famous, somebody set up a Facebook page from her school just saying, you're not gonna be famous. It was like a hate group before she'd even made it. So people are gonna be negative, so fuck them. It's refreshing to have a coach who will then go, no, you wanna do this, we can do it. So I would recommend it just for that, 
just for the fact that somebody is championing you is an amazing feeling and it gives you a real boost. So things took off a little bit from there. I started uh, vlogging around about once a week. I've been writing more articles. I've been doing more comedy because all of it is in the same wheelhouse of creativity and he's really, really pushed me along. And I got to the point, but just before the coaching ended, where I was doing so much stuff and my friend actually said to me after we did a podcast, I don't know where you find the time to do this stuff. It does feel like I just kind of had a, an, an accelerator pushed in my life. I was, I was just like, <sighs> towards the end, the momentum was incredible. Now, since I finished coaching, I've considerably slowed down. And now it's got to the point where I'm freaking out and I'm thinking about getting some more coaching again. Would I say it's worth £3,700? Probably. People will happily spend £1,000 on a fucking Mulberry handbag. They'll spend £25,000 on a flashy car that they don't need. And these things do not actually bring a, a great deal of value to your life. Whereas coaching is an investment in yourself. It's an investment in changing your mindset. And I'm a big believer in spending money on you as a person. Because it's you as a person who's ultimately going to create happiness and it's going to create wealth in your life. Whatever that wealth may look like. So do I think £3,700 is worth it? Probably, if you can afford it. I wouldn't go bankrupt and not be able to eat because of it. But I do think, if I look at it personally, the difference between what I was at the beginning of 2018 and what I was at the beginning of 2019 is such a stark difference, it freaks me out. Sometimes we need to stop and have this kind of person in our lives to coach us through. And you know, coaching is to an extent therapy and I'm a big believer in therapy as well. Listen, money is a tool for you to use and I would use it to sort this out because this is your key to happiness and success. Then again, you could say, well, he's just an open mic comedian making vlogs on the internet like any other prick and he's done nothing. But it just depends what your goal is. My goal was never financial. My goal was just creative and to control anxiety. And I think I've achieved both of those. Coaching is a little bit like meditation or the gym or relationship. You get out of it what you put in it. So the fact that I wasn't doing all of the work and I didn't do the stuff properly at the beginning probably cost me a certain amount of time with D to make the progress that I needed. But then again, I also needed that coaching to get me to that breakthrough point at Call 18 where I was like, I wanna do comedy. I don't want to do a fucking freelance video editor or any other kind of freelance job. I don't wanna do corporate jobs. I've never wanted to do corporate jobs. And coaching really just gave me clarity on that. How much is clarity worth to, to, to have that kind of authenticism in your life? So that's my review. Take it or leave it as you wish. I think you'll have to experience it yourself. There's probably better coaches out there than the ones in the Tony Robbins Foundation which stick firmly to Tony Robbins' teaching. But then I'm sure there's a lot of coaches out there who are terrible. I had a good one and I got on well with him. Try and be as honest with yourself as possible as if you think you need a coach. As Richard Feynman, the physicist, said, the first principle is you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Anyway, if you're thinking about it, do it. That would be my advice. But I could afford the 3,700, even though I had to find extra money for my wedding. But it all went okay. Be your own judge. See ya. <laughs>